Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a ton of speed reviews today for you because there are a bunch of products I've been testing, using, loving, not liking in some cases during my hiatus. I'm going to start with skincare because I have a ton of it and um, I know you guys have been curious about that. Why don't we start with cleansers? So a new brand launched recently called Prequel and if you follow Dr. Samantha Ellis, she's a dermatologist, she makes skincare education really accessible really fun and she started her own skincare line. They just launched with a couple of products but the one that I want to speak about today is their cleanser and it's actually called their Glenzer. It's um, a non-drying glycerin cleanser for face and body. One thing that's notable about the whole brand is that it is all face and body oriented so actually you get quite generous amounts of each product and they sent over their range. This is the one I've tested the most. It's really interesting because it's a gel cleanser that is slightly foaming and a lot of times foaming cleansers can be stripping but it's actually really not it kind of has this slippy feel to it that I think is from the glycerin in this cleanser so it's very gentle your skin isn't left feeling dried out or parched the way that some foaming cleansers can do there's also no fragrance in the line it's great for sensitive skin a really really nice option and like I mentioned it's super super generously sized now this one kind of surprised me this is the peach and lily glass skin face polisher I received this in PR and I really do not use physical exfoliants very often. I have sensitive skin, redness prone skin, reactive skin, so I'm very, very picky about the exfoliants I do use, and they're usually chemical exfoliants. However, I do actually really like this one when I need a physical exfoliant. Usually when I use this, I do it in a targeted way. So this is kind of one of those powder products that you pour out a bit in your hand, you get it a little bit wet to make a paste. I target cleanse with this specifically specifically around my nose and T-zone where I tend to get a lot of congestion. I have found that this addition, along with my retinols along with my chemical exfoliants when I sort of alternate this in maybe once a week or once every two weeks, it prevents that additional buildup that I get around my T-zone. And I've really been enjoying it. Another cleansing product I've really been enjoying is the Rene Rouleau Soothing Eye Makeup Remover. Usually eye makeup removers are not that notable, but this one is really, really nice. It's super gentle. It's fragrance free. They emphasize that it's a no sting formula and I have found that even with waterproof mascara, if I just take a little cotton pad and hold this against my eye, it removes my makeup with very, very little effort. And it doesn't feel super oily or greasy. It's not like that, but it does get all of my eye makeup off. And I did want to mention this because it's not very often that you come across an eye makeup remover that so obviously outshines its competitors, but I am really, really enjoying this. They did send this to me in PR, but I would definitely consider repurchasing it once I finish. Let's move on to more serums, hydrating products, essences, the topical stuff. I have had mixed opinions about Rode, the skincare line, not because of their products, just because I'm not exactly a Hailey Bieber fan. I'm not someone that's really followed her career. Obviously it's gotten a lot of hype on social media. I just haven't been a part of the hype, but I did receive some of their products and I have to admit that I really, really like this. So this is the road glazing milk. They call this their ceramide facial essence and it's a milky essence that feels a little bit emollient, a little bit creamy, but it's very much a liquid cream. You can see it has a bit of richness to it and I think it's a perfect product for fall and winter, especially if you want to add that additional layer of ceramide, of creaminess, of emollients, but maybe you don't wanna go in with a heavy moisturizer or you wanna add just another layer under your heavy moisturizer. I think a lot of skin types will enjoy this. I have found myself reaching for it over and over during the day as well as in the evening. So it's not too greasy that it makes me shiny or you know feel like things are just slipping around it does sink into the skin really nicely and it's also fragrance free so it's a really good option I think for sensitive skins as well let's talk about this Kate Somerville release this is their hydrocate recharging serum and it's a hydrating serum it layers really nicely under my other skincare texture wise uh, it has a bit of slip to it it does have some fragrance it has this like white floral fragrance 
which, um, you know, I don't necessarily love, but it's not so strong that it prevents me from using it. It just feels or smells really clean and fresh. I actually have found that I do feel like this is sort of plumping on my fine lines if I'm like dehydrated in the morning. It wears really nicely under makeup. Yeah, I've really been enjoying it. I have another option for the Sensitive Skin Gals, and this is the Erno Laszlo Soothing Relief Hydrating Serum. It's part of their Sensitive Skin line, actually. So this comes um, in a dropper, and it has this milky, consistency to it and it's definitely thicker and richer than the Kate Somerville serum. This has the most lovely cushiony slip to it. It feels like it's the kind of serum that doesn't just absorb and then go away. It actually gives me really deep hydration. And that's something that pleasantly surprised me. I found that it really sort of had a lasting effect on the skin. Their sensitive skin line also doesn't have any fragrance. There's no active, so it's a nice option if you're looking for, again, that little bit of cushion in your skincare routine. And then the last serum I've really been enjoying is by Beekman 1802. So they sent over a bunch of stuff and it's been my first time trying the line, so I've been going through things slowly, and I've heard great things about their Ceramide Serum Milk Drops. I have to say it does not disappoint, and it's actually sort of different than I was expecting. So it comes in this frosted glass bottle, you get the dropper, and the thing about this that surprised me is how sort of rich this texture is. So it's very sort of thick, it's almost like a gel. It's very bouncy and it really melts into the skin and it has a bit of body to it. So it has this slip, it has this cushion feeling and it also, I sort of feel like it's actually giving me a layer underneath my moisturizer or my SPF, whatever I'm using on top of it. It gives me, again, long lasting bounce and elasticity to the skin. This of course has ceramides in it, so it's going to help your skin barrier. You'll see that that's a theme sort of in my skincare right now, just because I have been getting treatments, my skin's been a little reactive, so I've been looking to calm the skin and really strengthen my skin barrier, especially going into cooler months. And also this doesn't have fragrance, so again, it's a great sensitive skin option. I know I just said I've been um, sort of babying my skin, but I also have been reincorporating active since my Moxie laser treatment. My skin's sort of been fully recovered. I gave it a break from actives for a couple of weeks, but I have a few new actives that are completely blowing me away. So the first one is the R Retinoate uh, Day and Night Cream, Youth Awakening Cream from Medicate. Medicate is the brand that makes one of my favorite retinals, which um, is the Crystal Retinal, and of course that comes in a bunch of different potencies or retinal strengths. All I can say is that retinoate they claim is eight times more powerful than retinol. This is quite a pricey product. It's in the high 100s depending on which retailer you get it from. So I'm not going to say you absolutely need this, but I do find it's sort of a one-step nighttime skincare product for me so I can cleanse and just go right into this because it is moisturizing. And I found that I've woken up just with really clear, bright, radiant skin every time I use this. I um, have been using retinoids for a very long time, like 10 plus years. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily a beginner retinol. You should just start with retinol. And I do have a video about that. I've really, really enjoyed this. And I think especially for more mature skin where you maybe want to invest a little more or you want a one and done product, this might be a nice option for you. This also contains vitamin C, um, a vitamin C derivative, which is why I think they call it the day and night cream and they do emphasize the brightening qualities of this. So just wanna mention that. However, if you are looking for a more affordable retinol, Naturium makes one that's amazing. They have it in a few different strengths now. I use the 0.05 pretty frequently and I really like it. I also have a 15% off code for them, Becca15. If you are curious to try, but I will say this is not as moisturizing or cosmetically elegant as the R Retinoate, but they're both great options that deliver uh, retinoids to your skin. Another active I've been loving is from Dr. Sam Buntley's line, which is called Dr. Sam's. They sent me a few products from the line and this has been a huge standout to me. So this is called the Brightly Serum. They actually have Brightly and Nightly, and they're both um, different. They have different ingredients. Brightly, contains azelaic acid, niacinamide, um, I think a vitamin C derivative, bakuchiol, 
and it's also hydrating. They, they're both sort of lotion consistencies. This is meant to brighten, refine, create a more even tone, reduce redness, and uneven texture for a grown-up glow. And I have found that really is the case. I've actually haven't been using a lot of vitamin C lately, and I don't really know why. I just kind of stopped when I was getting my laser treatments, and now that I've been living without it, I sort of am going through a phase where I'm like, well, I'm actually getting brightening from other ingredients that I've really been enjoying. So yeah, I've really, really been loving this. I have noticed a lot of uh, radiance and smoothness for sure. Nightly contains niacinamide, azelaic acid, bakuchiol, um, allantoin, as well as a little bit of uh, retinoid. This is meant to calm blemishes, clarify pores, improve texture, soften laughter lines. So this is more of your anti-aging sort of thing and this is more of your brightening, but they both contain azelaic acid and to be honest, I've never stuck to an azelaic acid in my routine. I've certainly tried things, I really like the Paula's Choice one, but I think the complexity of these formulas with the azelaic acid is the thing that I'm noticing. You know, with the niacinamide, with the bakuchiol, all of these things together really do make a powerhouse. And like I mentioned, I've been trying to focus on keeping pores clear, especially after my laser treatments, and I think the azelaic acid is really helping with that, as well as bringing down redness in my skin. All right, let's move on to moisturizers because there have been a ton of moisturizer releases, and I've been enjoying a lot of them. The one that I'm using um, most often right now as my day cream is the Beekman 1802 Bloom Cream Daily Moisturizer. This is a really, I don't know, kind of basic, not basic, but like in a good way sort of moisturizer. It wears well under makeup, it moisturizes, it's not too heavy. It's a very classic lotion-y texture and it's fragrance-free as well. Looks like this. I do feel like it is deeply hydrating and it also leaves my skin feeling really soft. So it's a nice sensitive skin option. Actually, all of the moisturizers I'm about to talk about are fragrance free and sensitive skin options. This one is certainly designed to be that way. It's the Tower 28 SOS Moisturizer. I love their SOS Mist, which is a hypochlorous acid mist. And so I'm excited that they're expanding the SOS line. This contains um, hydrating ingredients. It also contains ceramides and some soothing ingredients like allantoin. So if you're having, you know, stressed skin or eczema or dermatitis, I think this is a really nice option. It also is surprisingly not too rich. I was kind of thinking when this launched that it might be more of like a barrier cream or like balmy, but it actually is a really nice lotion consistency. It does have more richness for sure than the Bloom Cream, but it's not so heavy that it feels occlusive. It just feels like a really nice barrier for your skin and I think that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to heal the skin and I've really been enjoying this. I also like that it comes in a tube. Charlotte Tilbury launched their Magic Water Cream and this really surprised me because I like their Magic Cream but it's very, very fragranced. It's more of a makeup primer, I feel like. Whereas this feels truly like skincare and it's fragrance free, which is pretty rare for Charlotte Tilbury's skincare line. It comes in this gorgeous glass package. It has um, a white lid. Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream line is also refillable now, which is really nice. Despite being a water cream, it actually has a good amount of substance to it. It's not like a gel cream that just kind of evaporates into nothing. It actually does have body. And I feel like water cream makes you think it's going to evaporate into nothing, but this actually does have a lot of body and a lot of glide to the skin. And it doesn't just evaporate off the skin either. It makes a really beautiful primer. It makes your skin look glassy, but not, it doesn't feel greasy and it doesn't have oils in it because it is a water cream. But I just feel like it gives you a really beautiful radiance to the skin. There's no mica in it or anything. It just delivers that deep drink of water to the skin without just evaporating away. It's really nice. I highly recommend it. And I also do have a 15% off Charlotte Tilbury code that I will put in the description box. The last cream I wanna mention is probably the richest and it's one I've been using as a night cream. It's the Summer Fridays Rich Cushion Cream Ultra Plumping Moisturizer. This also comes in a glass jar, very heavy, very elegant and it has a rich consistency, but it's not balmy, it's not like overly emollient, but it certainly is stiffer 
inconsistency. It also contains ceramides. It's a really nice way of locking in your skincare routine, your serums, your hydrating ingredients, but it's not overly emollient. It also doesn't have um, too much I don't know, like slippiness to it, I actually find that it, it sort of sets down to a dry touch, which I actually like. Yeah, a really nice addition to the Summer Fridays line. I've got some sunscreens I've been loving, of course. I have one European sunscreen and one Asian sunscreen. This is the Abib Heartleaf Sun Essence Calming Drop. It's SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. Style Vana sent this over to me and I really love it. It comes in a dropper bottle, very elegant elegant and the formula is really elegant as well. So it has this really nice milky serum quality to it, but it of course is totally sheer. It's a chemical SPF with advanced chemical filters and it's hydrating and milky and just like delicious. It feels so nice on the skin. It also leaves a really lovely glow behind. It is more of like a slightly rich serum feel because it has that milkiness to it, but it sinks into the skin really nicely and it doesn't pill up or do anything weird. And the texture is just so elegant and nice. For a lighter option, I've been loving the Eucerin um, Hydro Protect SPF 50 Ultra Light Fluid for all skin types. My friend actually was in Europe earlier this summer. She brought back a bunch of SPFs for me but you can get this in the US on care to beauty I'll link that below but this is lovely again advanced chemical filters totally sheer this also has a slightly serumy consistency to it it's very fluid and it sinks into the skin really nicely as well it also has a ton of spread spreadability and I find it really easy to get coverage across my whole face and it is hydrating but it's not greasy, it's not heavy, it just has a really elegant feel to it. And the Eucerin is a bit more scented, like it, it is something I do notice, but it does fade over time. All right, I think that is it for skincare. I'm gonna move on to hair. But I do have to say, I have a product fail and it was like a major fail. I didn't take any pictures of it. I haven't had a product that didn't work for me like this in a long time. This is from Nature Lab Tokyo. And there is actually a favorite from this line in this video, but this one really didn't work for me. So it's called their Style Refresher Spray. It's called a dual phase liquid mist and it's formulated to help quickly clean and refresh sweaty strands while absorbing oils. If you can see, there's like the fluid in the bottle and then there's this white powder on the bottom. So you're supposed to mix it up and I think the idea is that it's almost like a wet dry shampoo, right? So you get that powdery element that absorbs grease and oil in the roots of your hair, but it also maybe cleans and refreshes with the liquid. I, first of all, shook this up really, really rigorously, but it takes a lot of shaking because once the powder settles into the bottom of the bottle, it's really hard to get it off. Like, it's pretty stubborn. I did give it a very, very thorough shake, and after a workout one day, I was like, I'm just gonna test this out, sprayed it on my hair, didn't really think about it. And hours later, I look in the mirror, and I realize I have white powder just all over my hair, like on my roots, sort of wherever I sprayed this, and I had forgotten that I'd used this, and it looked like I had taken <laughs> translucent powder and like dusted it over my head. It was the weirdest thing, and it doesn't say that you should necessarily like work it into the scalp or anything, it just says shake to mix and then spray, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it obviously didn't work for me. Um, I also feel like if I want that sort of clean look, I'll just use dry shampoo, and the liquid would probably weigh down your hair anyway and sort of make you lose any volume, unlike dry shampoo. So I did not love that. However, I do really like their scalp balancing sake rinse. And this comes in the sort of tube, you take the cap off and you work it through your scalp. And obviously the pointed cap really makes that easy for you. It basically works to restore the scalp's natural balance while removing product buildup and impurities. And I do feel like it does that. It has a very fluid consistency 
but it does have cleansing qualities. And I don't know if it's just the pointed bottle, but I do feel like if I have a lot of product buildup, for example, if I'm washing my hair on day three, four, five, whatever, it does sort of lift up that product or dry shampoo from my hair in a way that just shampoo might not. And I, I'm sure that has to do with adding another cleansing step, but I, I have really enjoyed it and I've really enjoyed the cooling sensation that this gives as well. The last hair item I've been loving is the Sasha Sasha One uh, Shine Serum. This adds um, shine, especially to the ends of your hair. If you have color treated hair, if you use a lot of heat on it, I find that it adds both shine and emollients, but it's not too heavy. For example, some hair oils that I use on the ends of my hair can really weigh my hair down. This doesn't do that. It just adds this really weightless gloss to the ends and you can control how much product you get because this does come in a pump. For body care, there's really just one thing that I've been loving. It's the Beekman 1802 um, Ceramide Goat Milk Body Cream. This is fragrance free. It's a generous sized tub. It's eight ounces and it's kind of your like basic moisturizer, except it's not. It does contain ceramides and things that really boost your skin barrier. I'm very prone to itchiness, allergies, dermatitis, eczema, all of that. And I have found that this is has been really nice whatever my skin condition is at the time. I found this really soothing and strengthening for my body skin as well. The only thing that I wish I could change about this would be for it to come either in a tube or with a pump just because I don't love dipping my fingers in here and it is quite a deep jar. Yeah, that's not my favorite, but it's a minor thing. Okay, I'm gonna finish with makeup, but before that I have one thing to mention, it's the fragrance, and it's the Fleur Father Figure Perfume. So this is their latest release, and I think it's my new favorite. I've been wearing it a ton. It is a green scent with a fig note to it, but it actually is much more complex than that. It's not just sweet, it is really vibrant and green, but it has some skin musks and some woodiness to it as well as it settles into the skin. Top note notes are water lily, lush fig, and cassis buds. Heart notes are orris root, which is one of my favorite notes in perfumery period, as well as iris flower and jasmine dew, and the base is skin musks, vanilla Madagascar, patchouli leaf, and sandalwood. I just love this because it is sort of genderless. It's not super sweet. It's not very feminine, even though it does have those floral notes and that fig note. It actually is very androgynous because of the woodiness. It's something I can wear during the day as well as at night. It's not the longest lasting. I don't think Fleur perfumes are the longest lasting perfumes in my collection, but I really don't mind because this settles into the skin so nicely and it just really agrees with my body chemistry. Mystery, plus the bottle is really, really beautiful. So it's been a real hit for me. All right, I'm gonna finish off with makeup. I just did a get ready with me with a lot of my recent favorites, so I won't duplicate that. I will link it below for you to watch, but I have a lot of other things that I've been loving that I do wanna share with you as well. Let's start with cream blushes. Obviously, we have so many cream blush options now. One that really surprised me is the YSL, what are these called? The Lip and Cheek Balmy Tint. When these first launched, I sort of imagined that they would be a little bit sheer, emollient, maybe a little greasy, not really my taste. I think the balmy tint gave me that idea, but these are actually very different from what I expected. I especially love the shade New Chills. That's this berry tone shade going into fall. Let me just swatch this for you. I did do a video about these on Instagram. So they're a screw cap tube. It's literally like a paint tube and it sort of has has this really interesting stiff consistency that I totally did not expect. They sheer out in the most beautiful way and even though it's called a balm and it has that balm like consistency in that it sort of melts and distributes itself over the skin as you blend it in, it's not streaky and it's not greasy or emollient. It actually is a very long lasting formula which totally surprised me because I thought it was going to be greasy and oily. Even though I've been loving the berry shade. I also love the peach shade uh, New Pinch. I love 
new flush for a cherry toned look. These are really long lasting on the skin. I, I couldn't believe it because it's just so not what I expected and I've really, really been enjoying them. For a more traditional cream blush formula, um, earlier this summer, Summer Fridays launched um, a new shade of their blush balm stick called Dusty Rose. It was actually my first time trying their cream blush formula and it's a very classic stick cream blush. It's not overly pigmented, it's not too dewy, it's not too emollient, it's not too matte either. It just blends out to the nicest skin finish. Dusty Rose actually has a bit more warmth than I expected. It's a great everyday blush shade for me and I really love it. But the other shades in this line are beautiful as well. I just think this is a really classic blush shade that a lot of people will like. Nude Sticks launched their Nudies Matte and Glow Core. This takes their original uh, matte formula, which I do really enjoy, but it adds this glow core to the center so it's this like glowy balm center and I've really been enjoying this shade peach pearl this is probably my most worn shade of the launches it's actually pretty deep for a peach I actually think it has a bit of like almost like a raspberry strawberry tone to it I find that it has all of the longevity of the matte formula but it also has a bit of glowiness to it nothing glittery or shiny it just adds a bit more glossiness with in appearance without feeling more glossy. So if there's anything that sticks out to you in this line, I actually do recommend it because I really, really have been enjoying this and they're very long lasting. What I have on my cheeks today is actually from Charlotte Tilbury. I think the brand relaunched their beach sticks, which were part of the line years ago or have been, but I think they were a bit ahead of their time. It was before cream blushes sort of blew up. And so they relaunched these and I think they also added a couple of new shades. So the one that I'm wearing on my cheeks today is probably my favorite. It's called Formentera. There are three shades. I don't love all of the shades equally. So this is probably my least favorite. It's called Moon Beach. And it is really pretty, but it has the most sheen running through it. There are like little frosted gold bits in it. I think it's pretty. I think there's a time and place for it, but I don't love that kind of glitter running through it personally. And then they have a shade called Las Salinas, which I actually like more. It's not as frosty as Moon Beach. So that's Las Salinas. I think it's a really pretty like spring summer shade. And then the one I like the most is the one I'm wearing today, which is called Formentera. And it's a really nice like burnt bronzer sort of shade. This I don't think has shimmer running through it, at least not visibly the way that Moon Beach does. But I'm wearing this as my bronzer all across the cheeks, around my forehead, just the perimeter of my face. It's a really nice shade for that purpose. I think especially in fall, winter, where you're maybe not going as bronze as you do in the summer, but you want to add some of that like burnt terracotta tone into the makeup, this is a nice way to do that. These are on the thinner, balmier, sort of slippier side. For example, they're not going to set down on their own, but I applied this in a really sheer layer with a brush and I don't feel like it's too sticky. It's because it is thin, you can get away with more emollients without it becoming greasy, but it doesn't slide around the face either. Personally, this is a shade favorite more than anything. Um, if I had to pick one of the three, I would definitely pick this one. The last blush formula is from Violette FR. It's their Bizu blush. These are not new, but they did send these to me over the summer. And these are a very long lasting, surprisingly matte cream blush. So they also are a twist up and these surprisingly do set down on the skin So this is the shade I just swatched and it's called Inez the middle shade that I swatched this berry tone shade is called Aisa and then the last shade is called Louise. So they're really, really beautiful. They're pigmented, they're definitely buildable. You can sheer them out. I think of all of the cream blushes that I just mentioned, these are the most matte in that they give you sort of a cloud-like blend rather than a glossiness or a sheen to the skin. And if you have oily skin but you wanna try a cream blush, maybe you find that they don't last as long on you, this might be a formula to try because of that slightly drier formula. 
But even though they're drier, they're still very creamy. They have a lot of glide across the skin and they are very elegant. For bronzer, I have an interesting product that I still haven't made up my mind about. It's the Jones Road Beauty uh, Gel Bronzer. And it's a liquid gel bronzer. And it's most similar, I think, to the Milk Makeup Bionic bronzers. Those are, again, um, a gel formula that comes in a tube. This one comes in the squeezy bottle, which I do like. And um, it comes in, I think, three or four shades. So this is the shade Light, which is my best match. It has a nice golden tone to it. It comes out very pigmented and then it really does sheer out. And it, it has a gel consistency and then it really sets down on the skin. You can see how much it shears out. Here's my other hand to compare it to. It does actually blend out quite evenly. One of my fears with liquid bronzers always is that it might look patchy or sort of splotchy or just make your skin look kind of dirty. I don't think this does that, but I do find that because it takes a little bit more work to apply, I don't reach for it as often as I do my cream cream or powder bronzers. And this might be a me thing as well because in its finish, I really like it and I find that it is long lasting. I just don't reach for it as much. And I will say the medium tone, which I don't know where it is right now. The medium tone is much more red toned. That's why I go for the um, light tone. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just haven't found the right way to use it. I know some people just like work it into the skin with their fingers and maybe that's something to do or more on like no makeup days. It does wear well over base makeup. I just haven't found a way to incorporate it into my regular routine. All right, moving on to eyes. Um, Fenty sent over their shadow sticks, a few shades of them. There are quite a few. I was really surprised by these. They're really long lasting and they're pigmented, they're buildable, they blend out really smoothly, they're very elegant. My favorite shade is probably Sip and Sparkle. It's this gorgeous twinkly taupe, taupey champagne, but I also really, really love the matte formulas in this as well, and I find that they're great one and done shades in the range for light to deep skin tones if you just want to swipe it on, and maybe you want a bit of dimension, a bit of contour to the eye, but you don't want to do a full eyeshadow look. These are great for that as well. So um, I'll just show you again my two most worn shades. This is Amber, which I think is also one of their, their contour shade. I know a lot of people love that and it's a great eye contour shade as well. And then Sip and Sparkle. So you can see just how shiny it is and then that's Amber. I only have one palette here and it's the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette Defining Neutrals. I also did an Instagram reel on this. Um, let me know if you want a dedicated video. I don't know if that is something you guys want, but basically this is a multifunctional palette. It has two formulas. One is a velvet pomade and one is more of a traditional pressed powder. So the bigger pans are the velvet pomade. And you basically can do a full face with this. In my video, I had a skin tint on, but I did my contour. I did bronzer with a mix of these shades. I did eyeshadow, of course. I did my brows. I did a winged liner, and I even did a lip liner with only this palette. Oh, and I set my under eyes as well. So it's super versatile. I think it's a nice way of bringing like makeup artistry, that kind of multifunctional approach to makeup products, but to a popular consumer, which is what Danessa Myricks does so well. I really love that the Velvet Pomade is is a little bit sheer because it has that creme powder hybrid consist consistency. It's that like putty texture. So you get a lot of different finishes from this. You get that sheer effect or you get the pigmentation of a pressed powder if you want it. It's so brilliantly designed because it has warm, neutral, and cool tones from very light to very deep. You get black, you get a very, very light yellow creamy tone. So it's gonna work for people to be multifunctional across all skin tones. And of course you can mix between the shades as well. The only thing that I wish is that um, the pans were a little bit bigger. Let me just show you. This is like my e.l.f. stippling brush. If I want to use 
use this for contour and bronzer, um, I do have to use smaller face brushes, which I don't necessarily mind. I actually do prefer that, but I have to be a little bit mindful not to get the brush in the neighboring pans. So that's my one point of feedback. That's like my two minute review of the palette, but I've really, really been loving it. And I think it's really brilliantly designed. For lip products, I have a gloss, a lip balm, and a lipstick. This is a tinted balm. I can't remember if I've talked about it on my channel before. It's the Naked Sundays SPF 50 Glow and Go Lip Oil. This comes in four shades. The other two shades are in my bag and somewhere else because I wear these all the time. It is very, very difficult to find SPF 50 lip products. It's hard to formulate. It's hard to make them feel cosmetically elegant. Of course, they have to be safe in case you ingest some of them, which you do with all lip products products. So this is one of the few on the market that actually feels cosmetically elegant and feels really nice on the lips. So they have a clear one. Um, I think this is, what is this? Coconut? Yeah, coconut. This one is um, fruity. <laughs> It has a fruity scent to it, but they're all very sheer. I use them interchangeably. Lip SPF has become more important to me as I get older. We remember SPF on our faces, our bodies, but I hate when my lips get sunburnt. So it's been really nice and it's a really easy formula to apply. For glosses, I um, am late to reviewing this, but it's the Half Magic Gloss, Half Magic Beauty Glosses um, in the shade Frosty Bitch and Magic Brownie. The one that I love love for myself is Magic Brownie. It kind of reminds me of the original Fenty Glow, but a bit more brown, but it has a similar rosy beige quality to the lips. These do have um, some micro glitter running through them. They're not um, big particles, like they're not chunky on the lips, but you do see them. And that's kind of what makes the lips look really dimensional and luscious. So there's Frosty Bitch. Love it, so pretty. And that is Magic Brownie. I love the shade Magic Brownie in all of their formulas. I love the Magic Brownie eyeshadow. I love their mouth cloud, their like matte lipstick in Magic Brownie. So I'm excited to have it in gloss form as well. Also, Half Magic Beauty is now available at Ulta. So this makes it much more accessible now. And I'm happy about that because I think they're such a beautiful, cool, interesting, like mid price point brand. I love Donnie, Donnie Davies. She's the founder of the brand. The final thing that I want to mention is the lip that I'm wearing today. And it is the BK Beauty lipstick in the shade Confidence. But I do love this whole range. They sent these over to me and you guys know I love the BK Beauty brushes. I use them all the time and I do have a code with them. I think it's Becca10. I'll include it in the description box, but I haven't tried much of their makeup and I was really surprised. I don't know when the brushes are that good or the tools are that good. I don't expect the same level necessarily of excellence throughout a whole brand, but these are really great. I first of all love the feel of these. They're very weighty tubes of lipstick. They are a full pigment lipstick, like a cream lipstick. I put this on over a lip balm today, so it's a bit more sheared out. They do have um, a very classic cream finish and they have a lot of pigmentation as well. I really like this red because it has a bit of a cherry red, but there's also a bit like a touch of raspberry, like a touch of blue running through it. And I find it to be really flattering. Sheared out, it looks a little bit more like a berry. They also have this like Barbie pink lipstick in this range that I loved and I wore a lot this summer, but you really can't go wrong. It doesn't migrate. It doesn't move outside the lines. It sets down, um, not to the point where it's like budge proof. It's not a matte lipstick, but it doesn't move around the lips either. Very elegant and moisturizing as well. All right, that was a lot of talking, a lot of products and a lot of speed reviews. If there's anything you've been loving lately, anything that has really stuck out to you, anything you want me to review, I would love to know. Please let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.